keeping with our stewardship uh, theme, uh, I am uh, going to talk a little bit more broadly since it is an anniversary Sunday, an opportunity for us, as I said, to mark time, to think and reflect and to be very prayerful and hopefully recommit all about uh, the call and the ministry that God has brought to us uh, as a great privilege and a gift. I was drawn to this very familiar passage of scripture, and I probably preached this passage uh, a number of times. But you know, uh, many of you know I was in South Africa for a couple of weeks, and uh, first time uh, on the continent of Africa, uh, deeply uh, real like spiritual, emotional moment in time. Um, you know, kind of when you when I, my feet kind of first really got down on the ground, you kind of I felt this like you know, little electrical current or something. It was like, wow, you know, this is this is a place where I'm from, you know. And it, it made me think a little bit uh, powerfully and deeply about this idea of belonging. And, and as I was there for a couple of weeks, uh, I tried very purposefully to unplug from, uh, you know, the news. I tried not to do any, you know, internet surfing on any current events. I try to stay just off of, I, I just want to unplug and just give my brain a chance to, ex, you know, uh, inhale, exhale. And, uh, you know, got a chance to visit a number of different uh, cities, and townships. And it was, it was deep, it was deep for me. And, and, and when I came back home, or on my way back home, uh, I started to look at the news and I was seeing all this violence in the Middle East, and I, I was seeing all the, the, the plane being shot down, and I, I, I got on SF Gate, and I was seeing the more shootings happening in the city, in San Francisco, and in Oakland, and Richmond, and I was always uh, deeply impacted by all the shootings happening in some of our bigger urban cities across the country we work in. And it was very fascinating the kind of experience I was having as I was, I had unplugged purposefully uh, or purposely for a couple of weeks and just reintegrating my whole person and being and thought process back uh, into uh, this, this country and all the challenges that are in our world. Uh, it really caused me, um, as I was thinking about coming back to preach on this Sunday, particularly for this day, um, to, to not only uh, think very narrowly about this idea of stewardship, particularly as it relates to uh, our individual call, right? But more broadly, uh, what does it mean for us as the way, as followers of Jesus, um, to think more broadly about how do we really take care of who God has called us to be? In spite of all of the challenges that we will endure and go through and all the ups and downs that uh, are sure to come your way, in spite of all of the many, many problems that you will have personally in your life, and some of us may have that happening even today right now, what does it mean for you and I to take good care of what God has called us to be as a people, as God's people? Uh, this is a passage of scripture that uh, was just put in my, my, my mind, at least brought up for me in some of my devotions, and I thought it'd be good to kind of, you know, use this as a, as a pivoting point, if you will, uh, as we celebrate and remember uh, where God has brought us from and prayerfully where God will take us. Uh, let us not forget who we are. Amen. In spite of all that's happening, in spite of everything that's going on, let us not forget who we are. And let us not leave the description of who we are up to a world that does not love us. Or up to a people who will always change their definitions of who we are. But what does it mean for us to remember what does God say, who I am, and how do I live the rest of my life in that regard? Uh, 1 Peter 2, 9, if you don't know any description of who you are, this is a wonderful, wonderful description of who you are. Uh, follow along with us either on the screen or in your uh, Bibles, but the scripture says uh, that you are a chosen race or a chosen generation in some uh, versions of the scripture, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim 
the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. All right. Uh, so for the next few moments, uh, I want to lift up, challenge all of us to not forget who we are. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God that has been read from us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you and send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Let it rest upon me and even the hearers of this word in Jesus' name we pray. Let all of us say amen. amen. All right. Uh, tell your neighbor one more time. Don't forget who you are. Come on, tell them that. Don't forget who you are. Uh, very, very interesting how all of us are constantly being described, narrated by a number of different people in our society, in our community, and, and those descriptions if we're not careful, we'll often put us in boxes that are not able to fully describe who we are. <clears throat> Some of us uh, have fallen victim to other people's descriptions. Can I get an amen somewhere in here? And based on your level of education, you allow your worth to be tied. Based on your uh, income level, based on your positional authority, whether it's in your job, in your neighborhood, in your community, based on the title you may or may not have, based on even your own racial or social identity, uh, you allow and we are easily finding ourselves susceptible to these kinds of descriptions that are often a small slice of who God created us to be. Amen. And part of what I continue to find as a challenge for all of us, the people of God, particularly all of us who know that we have been called by God to do something greater than what we're able to do in our own power. I mean, I am not an individual who uh, believes in my own talent, my charisma, my giftedness, uh, with uh, a level of confidence that uh, I believe that if God does not cover me, if God does not infuse me, if God does not uh, provide an opportunity for me uh, to maximize all that God has placed inside of me, uh, I can make a fool of myself real quick. Amen. I wish I had an honest church again. Amen. Amen. I think some of y'all don't think there's nothing foolish inside of you. Amen. Uh, I'm not going to switch y'all to my first Sunday back. But just tell you they were looking in the mirror. Amen. I'm just saying, no, 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 no.
And where and how 
life. The first thing that the biblical text lifts up for us today is that you are a chosen generation, a chosen group of people. Somebody holler, we are chosen. Oh, you're chosen. 
priest sacrificially giving up that which they know creates, as the biblical text says, a sweet smelling aroma. Somebody holler, I am a priest. I am a priest. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. Now, many of us, we think of holiness, we're often thinking about the list of sins that we can or can't do. And there's a part of holiness which means that you are without blemish and you are without spot. But the blemish and the spots are not uh, solely due to your ability to keep a set of rules. So how many of you who are holy here know it's because the blood of Jesus has washed away all of our sin? I'm holy in as much as the blood of Jesus is the Clorox in my life. All right. <laughs> And, 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 and some of us who got a few stains on us, all you need to do is get your dose of blood washing. <laughs> like, blood? I don't know about no blood. I don't know, I don't know about it either, but I know it works. <laughs> I wish I had a church who understand what I'm talking about. Today. I don't know, Pastor, you talking about blood and stuff. I'm not trying to be in no blood. I'm not talking about any old kind of blood. I'm talking about the blood that is connected to the, the love. Strange because of the color of your hair. 
the weirdness of your outfit, the, the radicality of your personality, the life choices that you make. No, you're known as being strange because people always know that your life is more connected to Jesus. And the ways of Jesus. Brother, my sister, if we who were followers of Jesus really believed that nonviolence was the answer, I was talking to somebody. I was in South Africa and they were asking us about our violence prevention work. And they said, you know, do you think that talking to people who are engaged in violence will work over here like it works over there? That's, I don't know. I said, listen, I, I, I tend to believe that the same God in America, the same God in Africa, in Asia, in the Middle East, and that some of us just don't believe that God can do anything. We don't believe God can do certain things. And then the things we don't believe God can do, we leave that up to the president, we leave that up to the police, we leave that up to Pookie and them. But how many of you know that God can do anything? I said, you know, I am so confident that God can use the body of Christ, the church, the followers of Jesus as instruments of peace in the world. Amen. That if we just acted in that way, even it may seem ridiculous to people, that is strange. But we have a history as a church of being very violent and we have a history of being peacemakers. Amen. And our work as peacemakers does not get as much publicity as our acts of violence. But I want to argue that those folks who are peacemakers were actually following more faithfully the ways of Jesus than those who are perpetrators of violence. And what does it mean for us as followers of Jesus to be peacemakers? So given to peace that folks think we are weird. Promoters of life, the folks think that we are living in fairy land. Oh, you ain't know, you, you, you're not living in the real world. That can't possibly help it work. I say, well, how's that war working out for you? <laughs> All these children and adults and families being killed, not just in the Middle East, but everywhere. We all got all this folk outraged about what's happening in the Middle East as we should. But we can't get nobody to care about the immigrant kids who are being housed in these, 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 these warehouses on the border. I, someone sent me a ridiculous article that said the Ku Klux Klan is now recruit black people. <laughs> Listen to this. Recruiting black people to join their against immigrants <laughs> to keep America American. And I'm saying to myself, <laughs> really? <laughs> we, somebody say we. we. We are God's people. Yeah. Don't matter your race, don't matter your color, your gender, your sexual orientation.
chosen race of people, God's royal priesthood, God's holy nation, God's peculiar people. Yeah. Nine years has been a fascinating journey. We're moving now into our 10th year. Later on today, hopefully many of you will stay or come back around 1.30. We're going to eat together after service, after we dismiss in a few moments, and hang out and play games and just chill for a little while. We're going to gather, we're going to talk a little bit about this 10th year. I believe that there is a very bold and audacious step that we are being called to take together. I believe there are families in this region, there are communities in this region, there are folk in this region, there are structures and powers, there are all kinds of things going on in this region, in this state, that we have the opportunity to impact. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Transform, redeem, for the sake of God and God's kingdom. What God means from we, the way. We, the followers of Jesus, is not to forget who we are. Not to allow ourselves to be redefined by the winds of change that are constantly blowing. Circumstances that, if you are not anchored, will have you, like, that, hey, that Dorothy or Alice, I'm wondering if we want to get it up. Alice fell down the hole, right? Dorothy was taken by a tornado somewhere. Dorothy, thank God. <laughs> you are not to be like Dorothy that a tornado is strong enough to whisk us away to a whole other place and we forget who and where we are. Be steadfast and unmovable, always engaging in the work of God because you know that your work is never in vain. This is who we are. Even with the several hundred or so individuals who have joined our church, neighborhood residents, college students, families, homies, loved ones, some still here, some moved away. We, we probably got at least a hundred or so folk who are living in other states and cities all across this country. Still chiming in and checking in, Pastor Mike. You still are connected to the work that's happening Berkeley, understand my brother and my sister that there is an opportunity and a moment for us in this 10th year to be greater than you were yesterday through the power of God. The impact that we can make is necessary and still in need of full manifestation, but I am excited because I know who we are. I know who you are. I know who and what God desires for us to be, and my prayer is that together we can take that step and be who God's created us to be. Stand with me, everyone.